All right, so now let's look at the third question. The picture shows five identical bricks. How many bricks are touching exactly three other bricks? Everyone, can you tell me what are the keywords here? Yes, we have five bricks and what's special about the bricks? Identical. What does identical mean, everyone? Same, right? First of all, we need to understand the meaning for the words here. We have five identical bricks. And we want to know how many bricks are touching exactly three other bricks. We have one and it is actually touching other three bricks and exactly three, not two, not four, right? So what should we do? Use our imagination and count one by one. For the first one, yes or no? Let's see, for this brick, it is touching this brick and also the two on the sides. And do we have any other bricks? No, so it's a yes, right? This one is okay. How about the middle one? Up and down, we have two sides touching the two bricks. And here for those two, same, right? It's touching with a brick. So is that okay? No, how about the bottom one? Upside, we have one brick and the we have another two on the sides. So it is also yes. And how about this brick? Look, yes, it is touching all the three, three bricks in a row, but don't forget for this brick, it is also adjacent, right? Close to each other, so it's not. And how about this one? Similar, right? Touching with the behind brick. And also we have another three in a row touching so now we can see actually we have how many? Only two. And also to solve this question, beside we can do it one by one, we can also think about it. We have five and we have every brick touching with exactly other three. That means there must be one brick we cannot touch, right? So you can just find any bricks here, only have only touching with the three and another one didn't touch him. So do you think it can be this one? No, it's already touching with all the other faces, other bricks, right? This one, same thing. So only this one and this one, those two are actually far apart with, from each other. They are not neighbors. So that's why those two are the required bricks here. And we can see for the previous question in Mass Kangaroo, we are actually still uh, analyzing all we can testing about the spatial sense. So in this case, what we need to find out is the three dimensional shapes and also we need to figure out the different attributes. We have a rule. We actually create a rule from the Mass Kangaroo that is touching with all the other three bricks. So that will be the rule when we want to count, we need to look for the bricks that actually meet the requirement. However, in the school math, first of all, we don't have those very like uh, complicated shapes. We don't have like the um, in a row and also in the columns. It's very straightforward, like what we can see here. And it is also like, we don't have a very like a uh, very complicated rule. For example, we need to find the bricks only touching with three other bricks or two or one in the school math. What you want to figure out is only count. So as long as you can understand the question about, you can see everything obviously straightforward. Okay. All right, so now we're going to move on to the fourth question. Here we can see one sandwich and one juice together cost $12. One sandwich and two juices together cost $14. How much does one juice cost? So here for this question, actually it is closely related with the algebra thinking, right? So here we, what we're going to do in our class, we call it combo method. Do you think it's possible to know what is the price for the sandwich? Not really, right? How about the juice? No. However, did you find something special? In the first row, what do we have? The sandwich and the juice, right? And in the second row, what do we have? The sandwich and the juice as well. So here, if I regard it as a combo, what will be the price for this combo? 12, right? And if you look at the second row, can you find the same combo? 
Yes, right. If I box those two together, it will be twelve as well. But how come the total becomes fourteen? Why? What happened here? Yes, because I have one more juice, right? So that's why the juice gonna be fourteen minus twelve, which is two, which is two. So for this question, actually, all of the information in the question is shown in the picture as well. So as long as we understand the picture, we can figure out the all the inform, important information. And here, we can use a method as combo method. Otherwise, you can also observe what will be the difference here. How come we start from 12 to 14? What changed? Yes, only by adding one juice. So it's also very obvious to see 14 minus 12, the $2 actually belongs to the extra one juice. So it's exactly what we want to figure out. And also we can see, beside the juice, do you know what's the price for the sandwich? Yes, right, so we know the sandwich is two, oh sorry, the juice is two. So for the sandwich, we just use 12 minus two, that is 10. All right, so for this question, it's actually very, very mass kangaroo-like. Why? Because it is actually related to the real life. It's like the world problems. And also, we not only have the question, a lot of, all of those information, we also have the picture. However, there's no difficulty at all in terms of the calculation level. So for this question, it's all about what we're going to learn uh, in the school as well. So it's about the algebra, algebra uh, thinking as well as we're going to solve with the world problems. So we just need to see the example in the school math as a similar topic like the problem solving and also calculation together with the word problem. In the school, we can see it is very, very straightforward. We don't have a lot of information. The picture itself is going to uh, explain a lot of things. And also, we can see everything is just one step. The two step word problem only happens in the third grade. So that's why if we are in the first grade or the second grade, everything just one step. 13 minus, sorry, 13 minus six, or we're gonna see 10 plus 11, right? So that will be the one step calculation and also we can see we don't need to analyze anything as long as we take a closer look at the addition or the subtraction sign we can find the answer so all in all to, uh, like for the recent days we have talked about a lot about like the difference between the mass kangaroo problems and also the school math problems as we can see actually the knowledge of the topic are very very similar the only difference is for mass kangaroo it's not about like copy the methods or just to do the calculation itself it's more about thinking no matter it is like the word problems or the spatial sense or anything else Else, it's all about we need to analyze the information and come up with our own number sentence and finally solve the question. That will be the difference and also the magic of mass, mass can group.